What's up guys? I'm super happy. Something incredibly exciting happened that I have been fantasizing every evening in my dreams for a long long time. And what we get today, some people are gonna get triggered by this and absolutely hate it. But we're finally gonna get the 4P stone skin, 4P lethal Elicat of my dreams. Now granted, some of these stone skin pieces are kind of so and so, I mean, I'm running a 5 star crit damage amulet. But we still have the Ascension, and I mean, it's less damage, but it's not that big deal. The, the main thing here is that uh, we're gonna get a lot more safely the block damage on the first turn. And I don't have to rely on picking Necrot in every fight. And that means that maybe I'll go with UDK and Helicat, but then maybe I'll pick something more offensive like as a support i don't mean i don't necessarily mean three nukers but maybe i'll pick support wukong or lady mikake or something instead of often picking necret with helicat or if they ban it and so on but as you can see this ring for instance which is what i got this week is very meh it just has one roll on defense but it's it's good enough rest of the gear is pretty good there's definitely some room for dusting but outside of the stone skin pieces which are okay but everything else is very good like, these boots would be very good if they just had crit damage but they sadly don't the shield is very good but um bottom pieces make, make much bigger different difference than uh, um top pieces damn i'm getting so excited that i can't even speak Let's get into the actual fights. Last couple of sessions, I think on the other one I had like 10 fight win streak and on the other one it was 9 or whatever. But I had some massive win streaks. Like I gained over like 100 points in the last two live arena sessions. I'm not expecting to do that well today, but I think we have better setup than we do last time. So one can dream. Maybe we're gonna get like a 50 point um, strike today but also I'm kind of gonna go to uncharted territory and try a little bit different tactics so there might be some big mistakes which are not something very unique to me but maybe we will see a, see more of them today than on average anyway I, I have been waiting to try this for so long o of course there is some major issues that I always struggle with and I will still. Like for instance, now he has buff strip and lockout in the team. This makes using Heligat very unattractive. Maybe we will not use it in this fight. We will see. Well, maybe I will ban the Warlord. He, he can't pick any supports anymore, so this is gonna be the team plus two nukers. Maybe I will go for Wukong and ban the Warlord. That could be an option. I will still at least have one polymorph and maybe everybody doesn't get um buff strip and lady mikake doesn't put block buff step off so even though she might take the block damage away it might not be completely terrible but should i actually go for the heligat it's kind of risky to do it but i almost feel like i yeah let's do it i, I want to do it on the first fight just to see what happens i usually wouldn't pick it against Lockout and Mikage, but let's try it in this fight and see what happens. The thing is that Mikage is of course gonna go first. And I have stone skin, so if she doesn't buff strip the stone skin on the first turn, I don't know if, he, if she even wants to use it on that turn. But if she doesn't, we're still gonna get the block damage for a little bit. So I could actually even go for Arbiter here. The Mikage is probably faster than my Arbiter, but um, I might as well go with a speed team against this. If you can call it a speed team, but at least I have two ch champions that are over 300 speed. And maybe, maybe Arbiter goes first, then Wukong will definitely go after her, assuming that Arbiter isn't banned, which she might be. Oh, Rotos is banned, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, if Arbiter goes first, maybe it might be okay. We will see. At least I'll have 
little bit of breathing room if that happens. Oh, Mikage is faster than my Arbiter. I mean, my Arbiter is only like 350 speed, so it is what it is. He elected to go for the ally attack on the um, Wukong, which is kind of weird choice. Wait, wait, did he? I don't think he did. He get Bok revived. I don't think he did. We might as well do it now, just to get more turn meter, get the extra turn. She can bust trip on the next turn, but now we're gonna do damage when the Nukers attack us. And oh, Ronda almost died to it, and that was without defense buff. And even if she does buff trip next turn, we're still gonna have defense buff up, so. It's not like a waste. Wait, what? Did she ignore block damage? I totally forgot that. Metzomel does it. Wait, what? Okay, I, I I didn't even I didn't even know about that. Yeah, he ignores unkillable and block damage. Yeah. I, I totally forgot about that. And we didn't even block the SP on Arbiter, sadly. Okay, that was a dud, but at least we learned something. Yeah, usually Metzomel is used for the block revive, and uh, I didn't even think about that because that has never happened before, but now we know. Let's get the losses out of the way, and now we can still. We still have time to get a 10 win streak. I wonder what I should pick against Metzomel. I should probably use Necret against teams with Metzomel, to be fair. What would have happened if I went with Necret instead of Arbiter in that fight? But yeah, now with the dust, I have gotten so many upgrades. There's still plenty of to do. Like, I'm starting to get so far that um, I think the only really bottom piece that I need to get on uh, artifacts is gloves for a necret on a bolster piece. And after that, I'm pretty much up to like top pieces and accessories. And soon I can <laughs> I can do other things like. Maybe stock the dust a little bit or farm ice golem for hex set and so on, but um, I'm starting to get almost all of the main pieces dusted. Though there is a couple boots that I have that are with attack ascension, which is of course good, but I probably want to switch them to speed ascension. I didn't really count those, you know. Okay, do I want to go with Rotos? He already went to UDK. Likely he he's gonna have Harima or something as well. Maybe we will go with Um Rotos, Necret, Harima and uh Wukong this fight. Yeah, let's go with this. I'm afraid that if I don't pick Rotos here, he's gonna pick Rotos, and th th that's all like fine. But if he picks Rotos, then basically only Nukers I can use is Quintus and Xena. Everybody else is gonna have a horrible matchup against Rotos, like Eligat and so on. Okay, he went for a lockout and one more Nuker. We can't ban the UDK, of course, but we can go for the Wukong. And he can ban the Wukong, but that means that I'm gonna have at least one Nuker in the fight. I'm not 100% sure if my Xena is lower HP now or Wukong. I was shuffling around with the gear and um, I can't recall, to be honest. I could go for Windows too, but I kind of feel like um, he already has the UDK, I can't ban it, so I can't kill Harima with the A2. And if he picks Taras, I don't know about that. Well, I mean, they're both gonna have a horrible matchup against Taras, to be fair. 
Yeah, this looks like a bit pretty hard fight, but um, maybe there's a chance. If he didn't have the Tarima passive, I think I would be good, but the Harima passive is gonna reduce the damage so much and see if he is gonna revive that full turn meter, so I'm not sure if I have this in back. What? My Wukong actually went first. I guess we're gonna open with the A3. Oh nice, we stole stone skin. Not sure if that makes any difference, but uh, that means, like, defensively for Wukong, but that means that we can deal damage to the UDK, which is actually great. Um, should I open with A2 or A3? I think, probably, let's go for A3. I don't think I'm gonna get two kills, but let's, no, let's open with A2, yeah. Yeah, A2 was the right choice, like, they didn't have buffs on them. So it's not like I stole a lot turn meter, but I wasn't gonna get two kills with the A3 anyway, so I may as well have gone with that. And now if I kill the Arima with the ally attack, well, the issue is that, well, yeah, the, the, the issue still is that um, He has that damn pesky full turn meter revive. If I were to cut in now before charge it, it's all good, but um He doesn't have Harima. My Xena would hit very hard if she just gets a turn, but if charge it comes now and one shots me, then it's over, probably. I guess if she if he doesn't rock the passive, the AO Okay nice, we cut in. AoE my, Nook might have not killed my Xena. Yeah, I built, built my Xena very fast, even though she has her passive, specifically because the uh, CFs are gonna revive at full turn meter, and that's a big issue. Okay, I, I guess we, we got that. Honestly, this, the second fight looked a lot scarier than the first one. I mean, I'm sure the first team was very good as well, but... Uh, yeah, this thing looks very scary. I, it kind of went the wrong way that we lost the first one and won the second one, but um, we're kind of testing today, so I'm expecting that on, next time I use the stone skin Helicat build, I'm probably going to do better than today because I'm going to take out of uh, matchups that I'm not very familiar with, so... But that's how you get, um, that's how you do get the best results and find things that other people don't know or are not familiar with if you try things. That's kind of how it used to be. I'm telling old bar stories again, but that's kind of how it was back in the olden days when I started using Gala. I remember uh, Basileus was fairly popular, used by people in offense to counter Protoss and Necret combination. To kill Rotos through Necret protection. And um what do I want to do? And yeah, I was basically testing every single defense ignoring Duker Nuker in the game. Like even the crappy ones. I tried like um what's his name? Blood Gorged and ev everybody. I was using Royal Huntsman, Blood Gorged, Shamael, every single Defense Ignore Champion, because th this was after the Polymorph and when people stopped using buff strippers. Basically th the new meta at that time, when people weren't completely familiar with uh, what would happen and Ukraine Duo didn't exist, the new meta was basically to go with Ignore Defense Champions. Well, that's not what everybody did, but that wasn't used before at all, and now it started to be used a good amount. Not against every team, but for instance against Rodos teams. Wait, let me think about this. Mm, he can still pick one support, so he can pick a buff stripper if I go with um, Helicat, but I, I kind of want to go with Helicat just to play with Helicat today. I think we're gonna go with the Wukong and Helicat again. Oh, let's put them the other way for the 
polymorph effect. But yeah, so I remember like I tried every single ignore defense snooker. And then I came to the conclusion that damn Gala is actually good when you pair her with Bolster and UDK. And I remember when I was posting pictures about it in my clan chat, like people were telling that I'm trolling and stop like baiting people to use Gala and whatever. Because like until that point Gala was like never used in like platinum. Like it, it had never been a thing. And like um everybody was testing things and people were posting um matchups and fights that they had and kind of showing their experiences and so on and i started posting a lot of gala pictures because people kept telling me like it sucks and stop stop doing it and you're trolling and then i was like trying to like convince them that look i got so many wins against good teams and everybody was like you're just trolling stop it and then I went, like, based on my experiences, I came to that conclusion that would I, I think we're gonna go for the Harima, yeah. Damn, he got, he got protection on almost every buff. That was pretty lucky. And yeah, I came to the Gala conclusion based on my experiences. And then on that reset, like, my clanmates thought it was a meme, and nobody else had used Gala or even thought about it. And then on that reset, I got rank 3. And I remember IPR was basically basically the best clan at that time. It was doing better than MAD. And there was this one guy, Rusen, who I hit like a lot of times because he was using a Protoss defense team. And, and somebody else. There was somebody else too, I forgot. But they both DM'd me after the reset that why am I like trolling against them and like picking against them that uh, I'm doing it just to like uh, show off that I can kill them with Kala. But uh, even though it didn't seem good on paper, but when you actually tried and tested it, Gal just worked really well in that meta. And after that, I was using her for many months and I got all of the best results I ever had <laughs> until we got Ukraine Duo. Actually, I mean, um, like my last high placement was several months after Ukraine Duo released, to be fair, but uh, basically it started. Uh, dying after Ukraine duo. Anyway, my point is that uh, don't be afraid to try weird tactics in raid and testing things because it's not like there is no like absolute truth. Sometimes people just follow what everybody else does and maybe with your account, the strategies and tactics that other people use, maybe they don't work for you because either you lack the champions or gear or you have something different which make something better for you that might not be the best option for other people. Anyway, let's focus on the fights. A little bit of pep talk, but uh, maybe I can use the... Maybe I can use the... What's it called? Like the morale boost I got from listening my own pep talk there. Maybe we can use it to um, defeat this evil Ukraine duo team, which I hate to my core. I mean, to be fair, my, my team is not bad against him at all. I have very good matchup here, so I, I can't be too, too sad about that. If he didn't have the Harima in that team, this fight would almost favor me and not him, but the Harima is kind of keeping my Protoss in a check. Like, now, if Harima wasn't alive, I could easily just um, A3 the Maritska and then kill the Sifi with the A2, but I can't go for it. And now if I weak it, okay, I didn't weak it. If I were to weak it, it would have been an issue, but okay, this is good. Oh, nice, I wasn't expecting the Sifi to, the, to die to the A2 now that I didn't have attack buff anymore. Yeah, fe feels nice to use support Wukong for once and not have my enemies using it against me. Especially now that um, I'm not as reliant on Necret to get first turn on Heligat, so I can decide to use Heligat even like um, long into the 
he can ban a face and I don't have to decide it as like one of my first couple champions if I'm gonna go with Helicat or not. And I, I don't think the, the damage that I lose, it's not that big deal. I mean, it is a deal, but like um, the reason why Helicat would win fights is not because I one shot the enemies, but because um, like he keeps me alive for long and gets those trillions of counter attack procs with his passive. Kind of like Taras, except like hundreds of billions times worse, but it is still good enough to get wins. Anyway, I'm kind of uh, throwing throwing ridiculous numbers out there, but it is what it is. I'm I'm kind of uh, stuck stuck using the word trillions because people are literally doing trillions of uh, points in Hydra CBC, and I find that in absurd because in normal normal everyday life you don't actually ever use the word trillions. It's not relevant into anything unless we talk about like. I don't know, like, um, like U.S. military spending or something really close, but in normal conversation, trillion is like not in the. It's not relevant number ever. Even billions is like outside of the scope of normal uh, relevancy, but trillions is just um, very absurd and comedic. L let's see. Do we have the um, I don't know if we are paired with IPR in this class or not. Oh, we're not. Let's see what pandas are doing. Yeah, I IPR is definitely the best uh, Hydra CVC clan and they do trillions, but I guess these guys are doing okay as well. <laughs> anyway. Wait, are we 2-1 or how is the fights going? Damn, I, I feel like in the last couple of sessions, even though I didn't pull any major champions, but because of the upgrades with dust and different tactics that I got, like I got Helicast in stone skin and my Dutch has got like 50 speed and so on, I feel like I'm doing way better than I was before. I can I can probably climb a good amount. Like I think I got maybe like 150 points last week. So I could probably do it in the next week as well if I really want to. So looking good. Also so far I have been kind of um how could I say very casual content creator. I mostly just made live arena vids and platinum arena reset videos and not any like actual content that other CCs do about like the patch notes and that kind of stuff. N now I'm kind of trying to do a little bit of everything and try content that I haven't done before. If you guys have any topics that you want me to talk about then um, tell me in the comments because I'm kind of trying to expand and be a little bit more mainstream than I was in the past. I mean, Arena is definitely gonna be the focus, but uh, I might, if, I, if I'm gonna keep making videos for this long, I might act, actually try to try to appeal a little bit to more people than I normally do. I feel like I haven't, I haven't made like even an effort to try to appeal to other people, and that uh, almost feels like very like even like arrogant, but I was kind of uh, not taking content creation very seriously, to be honest, so. Okay, so Dresden went with my Rotos. I, I have some, uh, some words to say about that, but I'm not gonna, not gonna say them on YouTube because I don't want the video to be deboosted. But I guess we're gonna go with Xena and Quintus probably against him. I don't think I want to go with Helicat. I was thinking if I should pick Necrat first. Oh, okay. I was gonna say that there's a good chance that he will go with Necrat, but I guess he's gonna go with Rotos and Georgie to assume. 
Um, hmm. If he goes with that, maybe I should actually go with Helicat. Maybe, maybe we will go with a triple Nuka in this fight. The last pick is probably going to be Georgid, I assume. Um, and I'm gonna have to ban the Yumeko, of course. Should I go for Windows or not? I feel like maybe I should even go for Arbiter within Swiftberry. And I hope I get lucky with that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Because he, he can still ban UDK with Quintus, which he. I mean, with uh, George if he goes for it, which I think is very likely. Well, he. I don't know if he knows I have Stone Skin Helicat, though. But if he knows that I have Stone Skin Helicat, he should ban the UDK so that he can kill the Helicat with A3. But I don't know if he knows. I don't. I'm not, no, actually, I did say about it in clan chat. Okay, maybe he knows. Maybe he knows. But um, I, I don't even think Helicat has reaction. I might be in trouble, but even but like that happened now. He can one shot the Helicat, but that's why we went with the Arbiter pick. That if he wants to kill the Helicat with the A3, that means that we still have the revive and turn meter boost of Arbiter, so maybe we can do it. And if he didn't ban the UDK, maybe he went for Helicat ban. Arbiter still is in the Swift Parry, so there's a chance to for her to be relevant here. Well, to be fair, he has the Rotos, so like banning um, UDK just in general might have been the smart choice, regardless if he knew that I had <laughs> Stone Skin Helicat or not. Okay, nice. So we got a lot of turn meter boost. Dutch is cut in perfectly there. I think we can probably kill Shu Chen with the A3, so let's go for the A3. I think we should get like a double kill here, yeah. And hopefully my Duchess can tank one Rotos hit. I would assume she can. Yeah, he hit pretty hard, but um, my Duchess has 150k HP and bolster, so probably, probably most Duchesses wouldn't have survived the Rotos A3, but she is a pretty pretty beefy girl, so... Okay, should I do the... No, I should definitely go do the block damage and not go for the AoE nuke, right? Yeah, I should do it. Protoss... Protoss doesn't have the A3 anyway, so... It's gonna buy me a little bit of time. Nice. Oh, she went for that. I think we're just gonna do another hard nuke then. I don't think Sifi is gonna die. But we might be even close, even though this is a very tanky Sifi. We're gonna hit hard though. Oh, she did die. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> get wrecked. That that's what you get for picking my Rotos, you goddamn bully. Trying to make me look look bad on a video even though we're clanmates. Just kidding. Anyway, that looks like a very scary team, but uh, we got it with the power of Xena and Stone Skin Helicat. This is kind of um, also a bit unconventional me to me. As I mentioned before, I usually go with Necret because um, I kind of need it. Otherwise, often in many fights, I wouldn't get a single turn. But now that I have the Stone Skin Helicat, it gives me more options, like he can get turned because of that, and Senna can get turned because of her passive. And then I could go with Arbiter instead of like a Necrot. And she's not the fastest, but if they don't have something really fast like Sifi, or if it's like in a really slow build, then she may be faster than some other semi-fast champions. And she's in Swift Parry, and she has the turn meter boost that can kind of... Uh, um, change the tide of the battle and give me some advantage. Damn, I, are we gonna have three videos in a row with absolute domination? I feel like I have, I have like ninety percent win ratio in the last thirty fights in live arena or whatever. Maybe not that high, but let's say eighty percent.
Oh, I thought he messaged me, but somebody else messaged me in Discord. Uh, I I have mentioned it before that uh, I don't always look at the messages that I get during live arena, and fairly often people message me, and then I reply to them after live arena. So if I'm doing that, I'm probably making a video, so don't get too too mad. I'm already getting distracted by like. Uh, glowing lights and my own wandering thoughts, so I don't want to get too distracted. Or like even more distracted than I already am. Okay, we got pretty high point opponent on this fight. Are we gonna... Maybe we will go with the exact same team again. Let me think about it. Or maybe I'll go with... Um, Triple Nuker and Arbiter. His, his team is so tanky though. Is that really a smart idea? Maybe I should just go with Necret. He still can be quite a support too. Uh. Hard choices. Okay, let's try it. I think this might be a big, uh, big fail, but let's give it a go. That last pick is going to be Helicat, likely, but I may change my mind. Okay, he has the ally attack. But I, I can ban whoever I want. I can ban the Guardian, like I can... Then see if your cardial, whoever I want to, so... I think we're gonna go with the... Helicat and we're gonna... Maybe even ban the cardial, which might sound very funny. Or... No, actually, I'm gonna ban Harima, what am I even saying? I'm gonna ban the Harima, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, he banned Arbiter, that makes sense. He can kill like Senna on the first turn. But um, I still have two nukers and I'll get the block damage and Protoss is gonna, gonna have a field day without the Harima passive or UDK passive up, which is very rare. So maybe I can still turn around the fight even if I get owned at the start. I'm seeing a lot more Guardian lately. I feel like many people kind of picked him up because of the ally attack and the immunity buff. And, and it kind of made sense. Oh, he went for Rotos. I was kind of expecting him to go for the... Um, uh, Xena on the first turn and not Rotos. But uh, I'm not sure if this might still be doable. My Helicat should cut in, I think, because I stole... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say I stole turn meter from the Taras, so my Helicat should cut in, but okay, now it didn't. Yeah, Taras did so much damage he even killed killed the stone skin of Helicat. I mean, to be fair, he had a lot of buffs, but yeah. Okay, we have only Helicat and UTK left. I don't think this is doable, but let's give it a go. Let's play it until the end. UTK is definitely... I mean, Helicat is definitely gonna do some work here, but... Um, Maybe I made a mistake with the ban. Maybe I should have banned the Guardial after all, like I was kind of planning to. So that was my first thought, but I wanted to go for the Harima and try a bit different. I wasn't... I, wa I was expecting him to ban the Arbiter, but I was kind of expecting for him to go for the Xena kill first and not Trotos. But I think we lost this one. I 
I mean, to be fair, my my team looks like a like a bad show compared to his team, so it is what it is. Xena is kind of hit and miss, and I don't think I still have seen a single fight of anybody else using her than me. So she isn't exactly like a um, popular nuker, let's say. Kind of underrated, I would definitely say. Not even a little bit, she's a lot underrated. Okay, he, yeah, we can surrender. His team is too tanky. Our Helga didn't do a big dent in those couple of turns. He had extra tanky revivers in that team. Some of the weaker ones, maybe there had even been a chance to kill them with Helga alone, but not at that point against those builds. By the way, what, what do you think about the... Probably most people don't care either way, but what do you think about the background? I normally have the... I'm talking about like the li li lighting and the uh, video background on the web camera, but I usually have a lot more light, like general in the room, and then I have the... I don't know what they are called, like the LED lights or whatever. They are kind of changing colors, and I feel like um, they look fine, but every time it goes to red, it looks like very bad. But now I kind of have a different atmosphere that the overall light of the room is a lot lower, and I have those uh, pink or purple lights, so I don't know how it looks on the video, but uh, I thought this would be a little bit of... Um, better atmosphere, I don't know. I don't know how it looks on the video, but uh, for me personally, I prefer it this way. We're not getting justice in many fights today. Hey, everybody is taking it away from me. Maybe we should go for Necret this time to have some survivability in the team. But I think we're still gonna go with Xena. Yeah. We do have the last pick, so we can adapt to whatever he takes if he goes with Lockout or not. But if he doesn't go with Lockout, we're probably gonna ban the Harima. I mean, I guess. Python is still available. I could technically use Python as well. Okay, Mikake. Just a lot of buffs, I guess, kind of good for Taras too. And she has the buff strip. Do I want to go with Helicat? I think I'm gonna ban the. I don't think. Python is gonna do anything. I was thinking about Arbiter, but let's go with Helicat. But I'm not gonna actually ban the Mikage, who has the buff strip, so I need to end fast or I lose. Maybe I should have just gone with uh, Wukong instead. That, that might have actually been the play. Because we, we have the Sifi Tena matchup again. So he, she's not super keen on doing the turn meter boost. And we have UDK. So if I had Wukong in the team, he couldn't have slept the Wukong. Oh, it's not it's not even a max level Mikage. I don't think it makes that big difference though, because she's there for utility and her survivability isn't really the main um main deal about her. Okay, I hope we don't get feared, but I don't think we can one-shot the Sifi, so... I mean, the Duchess, so I think we're gonna open with A2. Even though that means that we're gonna lose the block damage a lot faster, but... I think we're gonna... No, let's not go for it. Let's go for A3. I don't... Okay. 
We didn't even get the turn. It's okay. I'm probably gonna do a turn on Rotos on next turn. <laughs> do a two on Rotos on next turn. Just to save a turn on the block damage up and not waste it too fast. I, I don't think my Haley got this on Polymorph anymore. Only UDK is in Polymorph, but he's also in Stone Skin, so. I don't know if he's gonna save me or not. Oh nice, he did. Good job, UDK. <laughs> I guess he was uh he was listening. If you saw all of those uh commercials that Ray did about UDK when he became the like the when he was just a DK and then he got you in the UDK. Um he was all about trying to improve and get better, so I guess he was uh he wanted to show his progression and <laughs> and get the job done. Damn! 190k 191k damage on the Dutchess with defense buff when when we don't even have attack buff. The Rotos has gotten pretty oh oh nice, we got it. The Rotos has gotten pretty major um increases from the the dusting. Like his his gear at this point is pretty sick. And the funny thing is that Rodos is gonna get another indirect buff. I remember when Blessings were originally released, we, we were talking about the same thing. That Rodos is one of those champions that when they make some changes to the game, because of the way he works, like for multiple different reasons, but for instance, he scales from both HP and attack, he often gets indirectly buffed by different things. And now that the Blessings are gonna give out of the stats, Rotos is gonna get another ind indirect buff again, which he has gotten many times. Like, the, um, for instance, Rotos was definitely, when the blessings were originally released, Rotos was definitely the biggest benefactor of that, outside of, let's say, that uh, Polymorph is great. But um, the way Bone Armor, like the effect of it, how the Bone Armor stacks work with Rotos passive, it made so that if you have bone armor and Rotos is 50% HP, you can't one-shot Rotos. And he gained a massive indirect buff of it because of the way it worked. And that has happened many, many times in the past as well. Rotos, like, he has so weird mechanics that he always gets a lot out of updates that weren't really intended to be about him. And he's gonna get it again. Another funny good example is uh, Wogot, who used to be one of my main champions and the, like the old champions that I used a lot, uh, which is very forgotten and I didn't make videos about it back then, so most people probably don't know. But he was in my main classic arena defense team for a very long time, and I literally got into the Mad Clan years ago because of him. I was like finishing top top 50 with him like him rotos arbiter and rector that, that was my actual defense team and i got many i think the week that i got in i got 43 but i got many top 50 with that team and at that point wokot was already nerfed but originally when wokot was released as you know how his passive works not that passive when he gets attacked he heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. And this was long time ago. There wasn't a lot of the meta champions that exist now. And the best nuker that was used literally by everybody was Tranda, the old nuker king or queen. And Wokot had this funny, weird interaction with uh, Rotos and Tranda, or just any nuker in general, but it, it was relevant with the Tranda matchup that Tranda was pretty good counter against Rotos since she did a double hit and could kill a Rotos from full health but when Wokot was originally released his passive heal actually procced in between the uh, like the Tranda AoE attacks like she does two hard hitting AoE attacks and this actually healed in between of them and at that point um, Rotos passive worked it was a bit better than now with heals 
and without going for a long explanation back then everybody built Rot rotos on like low hp on purpose because even if he had a tiny shield that would uh, have very good synergy with his passive and he couldn't be one-shotted but so everybody was building rotos with like 14k hp and full attack and when Trunder did aoe attack because wokot healed rotos in between those aoe attacks rotos would be full health after Tranda aoe nuke it posed like zero risk to rotos during that time but i think that only lasted for maybe a couple of months and then it was nerfed but uh rotos is one of those champions that uh every now and then he gets a major major indirect buff that is kind of game breaking so now with the udk in the game and being so massively popular in classic arena defense i don't know if rotos can make another comeback That was a long rant and great history lesson, but hope you don't mind. I should I should do a video series about all the buffs and nerfs and like raid history, kind of like Layla Fox does with it. What he kind of like Layla Fox does with her raid lore, where she's like the only person that does that kind of videos or really cares about it to be honest i should make a video series about great history and the past metas and buffs and nerves and so on i don't think anybody would care about it except me but uh, i would probably enjoy making those videos that's that's not like uh that's not a dig at leila fox so don't take it that way i think it's I think it's great that she likes the raid lore and does those videos. Even if they are not like very mainstream, I think I appreciate it a lot that uh, she does her own thing. I remember, that's by the way a funny thing. I think now you can see the... We can see the raid champion lore in the game, right? I think you can see it in the game, if I don't recall. They added it to the game, but there's this random fact though that nobody uh, knew about, or very few people knew about, and it was kind of a meme among the active um, chatters in the old, um, not old, I mean in the official raid discord, and in the forums that are like never used and nobody even knows that raid forums exist exists there actually was raid lore long time ago and there was like some person in plarium in the charts and he or she wrote like i don't know how many she she wrote like or he wrote hundreds of pages of raid lore for different champions and those uh, those um lore pages that they wrote they had maybe like a couple of views and nobody even nobody even knew that there was this kind of material and then finally Plarium decides that, hey, we can actually use all of this lore and put it into the game <laughs> and like not um, not desecrate all of the work that that person put in that wasn't even used in the actual game. That, that was like so funny thing. I'm sure that person was super happy when they actually de decided to use his or her work. Uh... Are we gonna go with Necrot? I don't think we're gonna go with Heligat. He might still pick a lockout or Sifi. I think we're gonna go with Necrot and Xena. We we could go with Sifi too, but let's let's go with Necrot. If he picks lockout and I ban Wukong, then I mean not Sifi, I mean Arbiter. Maybe I should have picked Arbiter, but if he doesn't pick... Okay, I'm gonna ban the Wukong, Th then this was the right choice. Okay, good. I was kind of expecting that this guy doesn't have Sifi because he didn't pick it already, so... Kind of surprising he doesn't have Sifi, but his team isn't super empowered, even though he has the Ukraine duo, and he doesn't have, like, tons of max placing, so... Maybe he isn't a massive spender, but he just got kind of lucky and 
happened to pull the Ukraine to war. I would assume, at least. Probably he, he would pick Sifi if he had it in this team. I mean, Cardial is good combination with Candy and Aras. Maybe he went on it on purpose too. He does a lot of buffs and Candy has strong ally attack and I guess they can multi-hit Rotos to death. Yeah. Oh nice. <laughs> or maybe they can't. Suck on that. Rotos only has one reaction item and I don't know how many times he procced it but great job Rotos. I don't know if I should go for A2. I feel like there's a chance that the candy might not die but Nah, he has so many buffs. Surely he will die from the A2. Oh, okay, sweet Barry Brock. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. We, we stole 10 meter. It was worth doing the A2 instead of the A3. I don't know if my Xena can survive long enough though, because I think he can just nuke it through the Necret protection with those hard hitting champions. Oh my god, yeah, that's what I mean. God damn Taras, I I curse you. I don't really have much else to say about that. Except nerf Taras. You know, n normal nukers, many nukers wouldn't even have uh, enough damage to break the shield and do damage, but Taras just easily one-shots Xena through all of the buffs and the massive shield and, and ally protection and so on. It's it's dumb. Maybe I should, should do uh, another video series where I just complain about Taras. I probably have hours of video material from my live arena videos. I could compile it and just make Taras rants and tag them to the Plarium community managers every time that I post them. Do I want to go for the... <sighs> Let's go for UDK and Rotos, but there's a chance that he's gonna go speed team if he first picks. Lockout though. Let's go for this. Let's go for this. I might regret this. If he picks UDK and Harima now, I'm screwed. But it is what it is. Okay, so he's still going for speed team, but he did pick Harima, so makes sense. Damn, there's massive wind outside. I don't know if you can hear it on video. Should I go for Arbiter? I feel like he's gonna go for Sifi and Arbiter. I'm gonna ban the lockout anyway. And Should I go for this and then go with Helicat? But he's gonna go with... No, let's do this. I'm assuming that he's gonna go with... Um... Uh, let's pick Heligat already, yeah. Maybe we don't pick UDK. Probably I will, but let's see. He's gonna go for a Sifi, I assume, and then pick something. He will go with a second lockout, maybe like uh, Lady Mikage, maybe Shu Chen. Is what I'm thinking. Okay, Mikage and Tormi, so he didn't even go for a Sifi, and he's definitely gonna go for the Arbiter ban in this fight, and we don't have to actually pick the Necret, because, um, well, do we? Now, maybe I'm still gonna go for UDK, I'm still gonna go for UDK, yeah. We're gonna get screwed by the... Let's go for Python. We're gonna get screwed by the Torment, though, so... Let's do this. Eligat is gonna get the first turn. Assume, oh, he banned Heligat. I was totally expecting 
him to ban the Duchess. I guess it kind of makes sense because I went with the second demon. By the way, I have Triple Reviver and Rotos. <laughs> this is kind of funny fight. I, I like this. I feel like surely we have this. Even though he has the Harima passive. But I have Triple Reviver. There's no way my Rotos is not gonna get any turns in the fight. I think we're gonna we're gonna open with the A3 as well and gamble if we get frozen or not. Okay, nice. Oh, not quite enough to cut in before the Mikake. Okay. Is he gonna open with A1 on Rotos? No? Okay. Oh, okay, I'm good. So he opened with A1 on Python, and of course, you know, my bills are gonna be tanky, and it is what it is. He probably di didn't proc the passive, I assume. But um, either way, it would have been. Even if the Python. Well, he would have got an extra turn. I don't know. Maybe I could have still lost that fight, but I did have Triple Reviver, so I, I think I was good, to be honest. Okay, so 8 fights, 3 losses today. Not as perfect as the last couple videos, but still pretty damn good. And we have some serious opponents today, and I'm also trying some new combinations and kind of making some massive mistakes as well. Wait, did we fight this guy already? But was this the one that we lost against, I think? Okay, Dutch's first pick again. Are we just gonna go for the same old and he's gonna don't know what to do against us or eh, let's open with this anyway. I am kind of super reliant on that uh pesky dodges though. Arbiter isn't quite the same. Should I try a fight where I... No, let's go with Wukong. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with Wukong and got Last pick, maybe we go with Python again or we will see. Yeah, I'm gonna ban the lockout. Hmm. Arbiter or Python. I think I need a revive in this team. I I want to have some chance to come back. Maybe we will actually go for the Arbiter, to be honest. He doesn't have a fast team, so I would assume my Arbiter goes first. And if he doesn't ban Helicat, he's gonna go second. And if he bans it, then Rotos is gonna go. Or I guess Wukong is gonna cut in, but I mean that... Uh, at least one of my nukers should go very likely before anybody in his team, so... And also, he went for Pelicat ban, which I was kind of expecting. But now we have the Wukong, who can um, screw up the Taras, unlike last time when Taras had 15 different buffs, or I guess he had even more than 15 buffs, he had like 25 buffs or whatever. But now, now he's not gonna have any buffs or very few buffs, so maybe my Arb arbiter can get take a hit. What happened there? I guess it was the yeah, it was the passive. I thought I misclicked an A1, but it was the counter attack from the fear. 
Um, should I go for the A3 or... Let's A2 the Dodges actually. Oh, she resisted. That's not good. And Rodos got feared. Not the best start. Damn it, and I don't think my Wukong is gonna cut in. I probably have to go. I'm gonna go for revive here and hope that it's enough for my Wukong to cut in before Taros. He might even yeah. Okay, okay, good. So he went for the boss, he didn't go for the AoE attack or A1, so that that was good. Oh, we didn't remove that many buffs, but yeah, he's still gonna one shot the arbiter for sure. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, not and now, now it, it yeah it doesn't matter. We we don't have the um, revive, but uh, Bukong is gonna revive himself, so it's not a big deal. But uh, the stone skin is kind of screwing. I wish my Wukong had enough accuracy. He's pretty high accuracy. I think he's like 750 or 760. But uh, he's in kind of fast build as well. But he could get 29 more from chest piece. And I need to definitely work next on the Wukong chest piece. Because, well, you don't see like Dartesses with um, 850, 900 accuracy very often. Maybe he actually got lucky there. Maybe he doesn't have that accuracy. But you see UDKs fairly often in that, so... I should get the 29 accuracy since it is possible. I don't know if I have enough damage to do it. Okay, good. Wait, what? Why is he... Oh yeah, he got the extra turn with Candy, yeah. Those are the weird interactions that... Candy got the kill, and that's why he got the extra turn. And then Rotos got, Rotos got a turn with his passive, and got the kill and got the extra turn. But then it's Candy's turn to take his extra turn, and we kind of shuffle this. Okay, hopefully I can get a non-weak hit here. Come on, crit, crit. Ah, uh, god damn it. That... That may be it for this fight, I'm not quite sure. Okay, we got a stun. Good. Ah, uh, time is kind of starting to dig in though. Oh, we got extra turn. Okay, great. Now, no weak hit, and I think we're still in the game. Come on, no weak hit. Ah, oh, come on. Every time I do the A3. If just one of those actually didn't weak hit, I would have been good. My... <laughs> Look, we are four minutes in the fight, and only now UDK is gonna lose his uh, stone skin. He's he's basically zero speed. He he gets ten speed from the um which one is it? Blessing? Yeah, he gets ten speed from blessing or empowerment. Either one. He gets ten speed from that, but he gets zero speed from the gear. So he's in. Oh my god, he's in an insanely slow build. God damn it. If we just got that got that got that damn A3 the crit on on the candy then this wouldn't have happened. Damn, Rotos is still hanging in and UDK isn't really taking any damage. I don't know why he just hasn't been focusing on my Rotos. I feel like he could just <laughs> Yeah, he could have just A1'd it down long time ago with Candy and Aros, but I guess he didn't want to proc extra turns on Rotos with the candy. I don't know why. Yeah, we lost twice against the same team, yeah. I feel like that, that fight was kind of doable, but... Uh, but Rotos blew with. I, I don't know if I could have won, but... Would have been closer, at least.
I'm not really getting to use Hellcat in too many fights today. I guess he is a very popular ban, so it is what it is. And then often in the fights where he's not banned, I either can pick him because they have Ukok or Mikage, or then they pick them. So I can pick him in every fight like Taras, but um, the Hellcat is still super great. So. I'm very happy to have him in that build, finally. I mean, I say finally, but um, accessories on Stone Skin are fairly new, and it could have taken me years, or I could have never gotten it, so I was actually pretty lucky with that one. By the way, I'm probably gonna do some, some a little bit different video, maybe maybe on the day, next day after the release of this video. We will see how the video does, but it, it might create some waves. I I may or may not make, make a, some type of uh, comedy slash drama video, we will see. No leaks just yet, but uh, if you are... Uh, if you are very sharp, you might uh, figure out what I'm alluding to without me saying it, but I'm not going to say what it is. I don't know if anybody cares about that type of video, but I'm going to see what happens. So since I'm trying other new things, I might as well make that video since it's topical and it's kind of kind of a funny topic, at least to me. I don't know if it's funny to too many other people but it's definitely funny to me and like let's say my clanmates and so on okay a speed team with wukong i'm assuming that's a new wukong and not a support one and maybe ronda or georgie does the final nuker and maybe a lockout i would assume i guess it's another no go for UDK, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna go with Xena, of course, yeah. Probably Necrot as the last pick, but I may consider something else too. Maybe, uh, maybe I should actually go with the Necrot, right? It's a new Wukong, but it can still polymorph my... Hmm. I could go with Kyemar even though it's in a resistance build. Uh, let's just go with Necrot, it's, it's safe, but I don't know. Maybe I should have gone for a Kyemar or maybe even a Mikage this fight. Mi Mikage might have been the proper choice, I don't know. Well, he banned Protoss, I was kind of expecting him to ban Xena, actually. But even the, the, the Wukong can just polymorph Xena, potentially, even if it's in a Nook build. Oh, wait, no, no, I have UDK, he, he can do it, yeah, okay. Maybe I'm good. His team is very squeezy. If Xena just gets one nuke in, then I should be good. Okay, let's block. But wait, can he just one shot Xena with Turbol? He might actually be able to do it. Turbol's damage is super insane. Oh, he didn't even try to go for Xena. I think really good care Turbol could just go through this and one shot the Xena that way. Uh, let's not go for the A2. Maybe we lose the block buffs debuff with um, mastery proc, or maybe we just open with the A2. We're not gonna wait. We actually might get two kills, but we're gonna go for the A2 anyway to try steal some turn meter and get rid of that pesky block buffs debuff. 
Yeah, I don't... A2, A3 definitely would have done a little bit of more damage, but I don't think it would have been enough more damage to kill either a Sifi or Arbiter, so... There was no re real reason to actually go for the A3. Yeah, I, I think we got this. I'm getting a, a little bit of hyped, but uh, actually I don't think this fight is that um, dramatic at all, to be honest. We don't have attack buff, but um, he has so many buffs on them, and we're gonna get 10% ignore defense, so this might even be enough to kill both of the revivers at this point yeah Th that would have been a super hard hit if we actually had the attack buff another xena win somebody was telling i i haven't responded to comments in a couple of days i have read some of them but um i'm gonna respond like all of them together but i saw in um multiple comments i think it was these two comments that that uh, Xena Forge Pass is um, about to end and I'm kind of like shilling more about Xena to like try to sell it. Tr trust me, I'm not, but I do like Xena and I think she's a very good champion, so it is what it is. But um, if you don't care about Live Arena, then there's very little reason to buy her, let's put it that way. But if you do care about Live Arena, then she's definitely one of the better Nougars. That reminds me that I was supposed to do the Live Arena tier list and I didn't do it. I don't know if I have time to do it this week because I already had a couple other videos planned. Maybe I will do it next week or then I will push one of the planned videos for next week. We will see. But it's about time to do that one as well. I mean, it shouldn't be that uh, that shocking to most people that that may watch this video. But I think it's good to put one out there just to make an easy reference point to everybody. El Nino. I like that name. Okay, support Wukong first pick. Do I want to go for UDK? I, I definitely don't want to go for Helicat. But if I go for UDK and Rotos here, I'm kind of countering myself. And then if I go for Jatsis and Rotos, then he's definitely gonna go with UDK, so... I think I want to open with the dots still though, because for the polymorph at least. Yeah, let's let's go for the dots Rodos anyway. If he goes for UDK, I could consider either banning the Wukon or going for a triple nuke or so. It might not be the end of the world. Or I could just go with Resistance Kaimar. That's definitely an option. Wait, wait. That's a support Wukong. He has to pick two Nougars, so... I can definitely ban the UDK. That's not the issue here. So then that UDK kind of does nothing. Like, I guess he's probably gonna go with Harima, but... Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I misclicked. I was, I thought I picked uh, Necret and Xena, but okay, we went with Necret and Kaimara, and Xena is gonna be the last pick. 
I was think thinking about going maybe Mikage or Arbiter as the last pick, but okay, we got Kaimar. Whatever, I'm, it might be okay. I didn't pick it because I think he's gonna pick Lockout because I don't think he's gonna he's, he's gonna pick two Nougars now, unless that's a Nook Wukong in temporal chains, which is very unlikely. Okay, Staltus and Eprak. I feel like he picks a team around countering Rotos. I could even go I could even go with Tormin here, that would be kind of funny. But now nah, let's let's go with Xena. I could have just spanned the CP and went with Tormin, but now nah, let's do this. I think there's a very like he's not gonna ban Rotos. I think he's gonna ban the Necrest, but we definitely want to ban the UDK because I don't think he's gonna ban Rotos. Okay, he went for Darts' ban. That makes sense too. And probably Heprock is gonna be in Torpy Stone skin. Maybe. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I think this is gonna be fine. He did He did polymorph Xena and she's not gonna make a comeback, but my Rotos has the bone armor and a big shield. And Necrot is likely gonna cut in after maybe one of his Nougars. Okay, even before that. There's no, even if one of them went, they uh, they wouldn't kill Rotos and Rotos would get a turn. So both of the Nougars are in stone skin, so I wouldn't have been able to kill the second one, but Necrot didn't even cut in, but went before the Nougar, so it should be good. I guess it's still possible that... Um... Oh, I wasn't expecting Necrot to die there. Eprak did pretty large damage. It's still possible that I get weak hits, or maybe stun. So... Ah. Is he gonna kill me with A1? I don't think so, right? No, but I got the weak hit. I think it might be over. Unless I get the extra turn here. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, I was a lot faster. Okay, if I... I didn't get an extra turn, I was just a lot faster. If I don't get weak hit here, now I win. In the other fight, we got like three weak hits in a row. When it mattered with the A3. And lost because of that. So surely we're gonna get some... Uh, karma evening this out and we're gonna win, right? Okay, good. I mean, I, I wasn't gonna flip out if that didn't happen, but that that's fair. At least, at least for once, Rodos actually got the rich with the A three and not the weak it. That wasn't the scariest team though, and it was very close. But I guess I kind of trolled myself with the accidental guy pick. Kaimar is kind of a meme because I have been using him to counter lockout, though not a lot lately. But I'm not really sure have I picked him more times accidentally or on purpose. Because every time I don't pick any champion in time, it's gonna pick the champion with highest player power, which is gonna be my Kaimar, who is built on resistance. And God knows how many times I have picked Kaimar accidentally, so. <laughs> It might, it might be more times than I have picked him on purpose. Now, let's open with the UDK and Rotos and not Galaxis this time. UDK is so good against Taras that uh, it is not a bad idea to just go with this. Ah, Lazarus. Lazarus hits shockingly hard. I don't think he has any ignore defense on his skills but he has that weird scaling i think it's from how many allies are alive or how many boss depending on conditions that skill hits very hard shockingly hard I 
I'm not going. Yeah, let's go with Necrots. Yeah, let's do it. Maybe I could have gone with Wukong too. Maybe, maybe I should have done that actually. Well, it's too late to cry about it at this point. But then again, I'm not gonna. Well, I could have done that with Wukong too, but I'm not gonna get feared by the Taras on Helicat because he has the four piece stone skin. So, yeah, he, what? He went with triple nuker. Yeah, if I just ban the lockout, then surely I'm good. I think he's almost certainly gonna actually ban my helicat. And if he doesn't ban it, I don't think I don't see how I can lose this fight. To be honest. Okay, he didn't. Might be different if he had double reviver, and I would have very hard time killing off his team but he just has one elva no other revive or heal so surely i can do it if it was elva and maritska i think i most certainly would have lost this but i think i have a good chance now well I, actually i think i should just win this i don't think it's even a chance but let's see how this goes it's kind of weird matchups Maybe I'm overlooking something about Lazarus kit, but I don't think there's anything that he can do against this. He's very good against something like Wukong that you can easily kill and he can abuse the lockout. And he does hit shockingly hard with, I think it's the A3 on the second form. But um, we have the block damage, I don't think he's gonna be that scary this time. Yeah, let's give the protection to UDK just to rock the Necret passive and get the cooldown back faster. And yeah, let's just do A1 here and save the A3 for later. I mean, we have the defense buff, maybe. No, yeah, let's do it next turn. Yeah. Oh, this guy is super high points, by the way, I just realized. I mean, he has very good champions, but it's kind of unusual team, so maybe I I should be more scared than I am. Then again, I'm I'm running the the Ultra Cancer Helicat comeback strategy that everybody hates, so it is what it is. Come on, let me have this win. Ah, so close. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we can finish that off. Yeah, everybody resisted the Lazarus. I mean, Surely that's a new Lazarus. Like, I think he's in support form. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no! I forgot Lazarus has the revive in support form as well, and then he has the nuke form. Okay, I, 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 I got, I got duped. Either that is like a support Lazarus and it's not even a nuker, or then he just used the nuker as a reviver as well. I, I thought I had it, but I got finessed. Let's let's look at the Lazarus kit. His his kit is such a like a such a novel. You have to read so many different effects and extra effects and conditional effects that you kind of get tired. But he was in the support form when the fight ended, and the other one is the nuke form. And I guess he did the revive on the support form. 
Each turn meter of allies by 20% and decreases enemy turn meter. Then places 50% increase attack and strength. And no, it's not a revive. What is the passive? Is the revive? At the end of this champion's turn, revive a random ally with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. Also places a perfect whale buff on the revived ally for two turns. I guess he got us with this one, but I'm super confused. And he also used this skill for the Helicat uh, block damage. Also decreases the duration of all buffs on enemies by two turns. Yeah, that's the one that he used. Did he even use the nuke for? Maybe he was actually using Lazarus as a pure support. I don't think I have ever seen that. It, it might have been a nuke build. And he used the support. I, I don't even know. I'm super confused. Usually you see the second form and you barely see the first form, but he was just using the first form, so. I guess you can I guess you can do that as well. Anyway, Lazarus is definitely a great champion. Maybe maybe the second best. Um Mythical champion after Quixia. Definitely the best nuker out of them. Let's put it that way. I wish I would have I wish I would have, would have pulled Lazarus instead of Mikage, but uh Mikage is very good as well. It's just that you get the free one as well, so it is kind of sad to get the um, fusion champion from a pool, but I'm sure it has happened to probably, I don't know, more, most or many, but to a lot of other people watching this video as well, so. Okay, so far so good. He has a very good team, but uh, on paper it's one of the best champions in the game, but my team also has a good matchup against it, so it could be worse. He definitely could pick worse stuff. I assume that Harima is going to be the last pick though, and we are going to ban the lockout. Should we go with Triple Nogar actually? Triple Nogar or maybe with Double Reviver to get some Terminator boost from Arbiter. Let's try this one. I feel like there's a good chance that he wants to ban the Helicat, so... Yeah, maybe this was the right solution. Yeah, he, yeah, we have two revivers. He can only ban one of them. And if we just had one reviver, then if Rodos died, he would have been out. I mean, he would have banned the only reviver then, Yatsus, and then Rodos would have died before getting a single turn. Yeah, I'm running triple stone skin. If Rotos was also like full reaction, this would be ultra cancer team, but with all of the multi attacks he has, of course, he can he can kill the Rotos. We even get the Gatsis revive just in time to get the block damage. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And now we're just gonna take it slowly. I think we're gonna do Rotos A2 next turn and kind of let his team marinate with the 
Helicat passive. And then we're just gonna do a double kill on Protoss next turn and try to kill both of the revivers. I think I think we can do it. I don't think that's um I think we should have this fight. That's what I said against the Lazarius, and then he destroyed me, but uh I'm more familiar with this matchup, so I think we can do it. He does have very tanky Marit's Kato. Yeah, but okay, maybe it's good enough. We did a little bit of damage and maybe I should go for another A1 on the Mariska actually. Yeah, let, let's do that. Now Rotos can definitely kill it. Actually, maybe, I don't know. Now it looks like Sifi is lower HP. They both have shields. I'm not sure if I can kill the Sifi or not, but she does have, she's very tanky build and has shield. But we do have attack buff, which I don't always do, so maybe so close. Hmm. How many polymorphs does he have? Only Sifi is in polymorph, but it's six star. I don't think I want to risk it and go for the A3. Wait, wait. Yeah, let's let's do the shit. I could have gone for the A1 either on Ronda or Marisk, but let's do the shield instead. Wait, this might be bad. I think Tronda is gonna kill Rotos now, right? Well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe it's okay. We just need to kill the Sifi now before she gets the revive up, and then we're just gonna like reset. Let's go for the A1 and not the AoE. Yeah. We will get Rodos back up and we're just gonna turtle some time. He definitely can't kill Duchess that easily through the UDK and Helicat with just Taras alone, so without without enough buffs to kill my super tanky team, so Should I even go for the A the um, I don't know if I should go for this, but let's do it. I think we have still two turns until we can actually revive Rotos, so the Maritzka might actually die too fast. Uh, I, I don't think... She doesn't have Ronda A2, so it's not like she can block, block cooldowns of Helicat, so I think we're good, yeah. Okay, nice. I guess we... Heligat is just taking it to the bank. Let's reflect on today's fights a bit. I want to see the win ratio with Heligat. Okay, so only like three wins and two losses, but... Uh, I guess all of the teams that we did lose against were like... Super strong teams, yeah. And it was kind of close too, but uh, actually, I, even the yeah, I, I guess it makes sense. I'm so high points that there's no easy enemies anymore. Everybody has like mon monster account that we're fighting, except the guy with Heprak and um, what was the other nuker? Th that was th that was the only thing that didn't look very scary. And we almost lost that one. Which team was it? Oh yeah, this one. Hebrak and Staltus. El Nino's team, I, yeah, he's clearly way lower rating than the rest, but his team was the one that didn't look that intimidating, but we did almost lose that fight, to be fair. What? Level 96, but he's actually 4.5k points, so I'm barely higher points than this guy.
Ok, Sifian, Torros. It's the usual UDK and Rotosters. It's kind of no brainer matchup for me, and I pretty much always pick it if they open with those two. I feel like this looks a lot more, um, a lot more typical, like, um, content creator or streamer, um, like, quality now with the purple light, but I don't know if you guys think it's worse or not, but I kind of like it personally, at least. I should get some posters on the background or something to make my wall look a bit prettier or more professional though. Plus three ragas. I wish I had that. But I, I I'm still missing my first ragas. I'm kind of looking um looking up when, when I can actually use it and I'll definitely make videos about ragas when I pull it. Surely I will eventually get one. I think there was a guaranteed event for it maybe long time ago. I guess we're gonna go with Helicat again. Python? Maybe? Python, let's go with Python. I'm kinda going for like insanely tanky team if he banished the Rotos. But uh, I'm slightly scared of the Ragas, so let's go for Python. Wait. I literally don't know what this champion is. WTF is that? <laughs> okay, I guess the, the avatar kind of looks cool, but I don't have the slightest of clue what that champion does. Just being honest. Uh, Mariskaban? Yeah, Mariskaban. I was thinking between Sifi or Marisco, but let's go for the Mariskaban. Is that a reviver or like, what does it even do? I don't even know the champion's name, so I can't look it up. Otherwise, I would like open Ayumi Love on the second deck, but I have no clue what. <laughs> No clue what that green goblin is or orc or... Wait, wait, wasn't that like a fusion or something? I think that was maybe like a fusion that I... I maybe didn't even like open or pull. I don't, I don't remember. Everybody is in stone skin. This is what the uh, high level live arena ultra cancer try hard gameplay looks like. N no, not just everybody is in bolster, but uh, I'm starting to like double up my teams. That Duchess is in bolster and stone skin. I mean, everybody's in stone skin. Duchess is both in bolster and stone skin, and. Uh, Helicat is both in Stone Skin and Lethal, and hopefully one day Python as well, well will be in Bolster and Stone Skin. <laughs> but probably not my biggest priority. Maybe I will put Necret into that before him, we will see. But that's probably gonna be the. Oh, yeah, he does buff strip. He... Yeah, he, he definitely was a fusion or something, I think. Maybe I skipped him, or I didn't pull him from Fragment, I have no idea. Wait, wait, that was recently, I mean, we, we did talk about it, I did think about him a bit. I just totally forgot about him. Anyway, don't, don't even mention the fact that I'm 
clueless about some champions. That's definitely the first time I have seen that thing in arena and might be literally the first time that I have seen it in game as well. So I guess it was a good matchup since he does the buff strip. Maybe I even should have gone for Maritska instead of, or like uh, gone for him instead of Maritska. But since I'm so clueless, I, I made a major mistake in this fight. But unless he has revive, which I don't know if he has a revive, but no, I, I don't think he has. I think that. I remember when that fusion happened, and I remember I said something like if he at least had Revive, then he would be interesting. M maybe. I think I said something like that. I said some major issue with him why he's not gonna be used. But if he doesn't have Revive, then, then we're good. Our team is so tanky that he's not able to easily kill it, but he probably can, or he, he definitely can eventually with Taras. But, um... If that thing doesn't have revive, then we're definitely gonna, gonna kill him before that. Uh, I probably should have hit Taras there to reduce the UDK attack with the passive, but I was kind of uh, not thinking it through. If, if my Helicat had, um, well, yeah, if I can get Blessing on Helicat now with the up-to-date Blessings that they all give all of the stats, that Ragas would definitely die. And of course, he could be empowered and so on as well. But I probably should focus on getting 4-star Helicat Blessing now. That, that's definitely going to be a big priority for me. Maybe even 6-star maybe even uh, Blessing on on Helicat might actually be the next goal on my account because that could mean that I could get um, Polymorph on him even after the nerf it might be worthwhile to do especially now that he can also get the great damage and speed and everything from that as well Can we one shot the Sifi? Probably not Oh, kind of close Well, I don't know if you can call that one shot but Whatever it is. I guess I should go for A1. Maybe we can kill it. Okay, good. Okay, le let's see if this thing has a revive, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Uh, no, no, now I remember. He, he had the thing that... Um, was it when enemy team revives, he does his... Uh, AOE buff strip again. I think that was his thing, but he doesn't actually have his own revive or something. Kind of embarrassing that I can't remember his kit, but I'm just keeping it real. Wait, he's not orc champion. Now I don't even know what faction he is. Surely he must be orc. Oh my god, do I have to like um, go through all of the factions to find him? Maybe, no, maybe he's Ogre. Yeah, he must be Ogre. Yeah. Okay, Ugir. Tell me how you say that name. I will say Ugir the Worm Eater, but I'm sure you guys don't like my pronunciation of his name. But, um. Okay, so. Accuracy and attack buff for defense buff. And yeah, he does the buff strip if enemy gets revived, and that's it.
if if he he should have some kind of reviving his own kit to make him interesting. Maybe if he revived when the enemy team revives, or he revived when he does the buff strip, but um, I'm pretty sure he's kind of intended for PvP, but this is not good enough. Yeah, I, I think I... <laughs> I think I like read his kit once and then I probably said in CC chat or my clan discord or something I said that the champion sucks and then I never thought about it again and, and I totally erased the existence of that champion in my mind wait did I have the champion I'm pretty sure it was a fusion right did I skip that fusion or do I have it and I just I didn't then remember I had it Okay, I don't have it. Maybe I skipped the fusion. What? There, there's been a couple of fusions that I wasn't able to do. Maybe it was one of them. Well, do doesn't matter. Never gonna use it, so... It is what it is. So Sometimes people get mad when I tend to be a little bit of back and white with the uh, champions. Like, um are they relevant or not but um i care about pvp and some champions that are like for pve but they are not like the best for pve i don't care and then if they are like uh, okay for pvp but there's better options i also don't care unless they are like um like they will still have to be very good if if um let's say if basher was better and more closer to lockout like because he basically does only one turn lockout in practice because the duration of the buff we are soft by one so you only get locked out for one turn if he did two turn lockout or maybe if um samson was more similar to taras like they basically have the same kit but it's just way worse but even if it was a lot worse than taras but better than it is now, maybe they might be good, both of them, but they are both so much worse than their counterparts that they are not very relevant in PvP. Like, believe me, I, I have tried to make Samson work, and I have used him in the past, but he's not good enough. At least if you fight, fight against good teams, he's not. Damage is too, too low, and even though he has a passive like Taras, that uh, reduces the damage that he takes but it's only by 20% and it's a lot worse than 50% and he also does counter attack but it is with his A1 which does way less damage than Taras A2 so like I don't know maybe like 4 times less damage yeah something like that 3 times less damage so and it doesn't wait it does stun <laughs> it does stun what am I saying that's what I mean, that they are very similar champions. They both stun, they both are HP scaling nukers with counter attack, with relatively high multiplier AoE, except uh, the condition on Samson AoE is much worse, and it just overall has worse multipliers as well. And then they both have the passive that reduces the damage. So on paper, when, uh, when Samson is so similar to Taras, you would think he's a good champion, but he's so bad that you might not even know his kit. Kind of like I didn't know the kit of Yuger, or I didn't remember, because he's so irrelevant. N nobody does anything with Samson. Again, we don't get Duchess. Duchess is picked every fight. I, I guess it's heli Heligat time again, maybe. I haven't been using Python a lot lately, but I guess we're gonna go with Python multiple fights today.
Okay, Garol is good, but um, of course, not an issue with Helicat, and Garol is very squeezy. I'm thinking about banning the Harima, but. Um, I mean, no, no, I'm thinking about banning the Ukko, but the Harima might be issue though. Yeah, let's go with double reviver. I was, yeah, I was kind of expecting him to ban one of the nukers. I could have maybe went with Kaimar. Maybe in this one Kaimar would have actually been good. So it's good to have double reviver because uh, even if I don't kill him very fast, but I have a way to get back up and hopefully finish him but he has double reviver as well and they are both very tanky and helicat can't crit on harima so we basically must get it last and not early on i think the this is gonna be one long fight. I don't have any accuracy on my Arbiter, which would be kind of good if... Okay, we actually got lucky on the CP. It would be kind of good if we had some, but I think she has very low amount of accuracy. Should, yeah, I, I guess we might just as well kill the Carol. Yeah, let's do it. How many polymorphs does he have? Only Sifi, but it's a six star. And yes, yeah, she does have immunity, so it's not gonna do a lot, but we might as well use it just for damage. Yeah, that's actually kind of risky. I shouldn't have done it. There's a chance that Arbiter is gonna get polymorphed if I A1 the Sifi. UDK is putting in a lot of work. Okay, that's that's not good. One turn left till the cleanse. I think the Carol can one shot the Helica. Surely it can one shot it. Even with the defense buff. Just yeah, there's no way that he can survive. Probably Arbiter is gonna die as well. Okay, Arbiter didn't die. Which is kind of surprising, to be honest. I think he probably brought Helm Smasher on Python, but not Arbiter. Okay. Can Helicat survive? Probably not. Unless she only has A1. Yeah. Oh, we didn't get... We didn't get taunted, but are we gonna get turn? Uh... Pretty sure it has to block damage up now. Otherwise, if I do this, uh, it's a mistake, but I think he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I'm not looking good, but I think we can get everybody back up, at least now. But uh, do we have the damage to actually kill those two ultra tanky revivers with just Helicas? 
it was kind of close actually before, but now like they don't have revives are of cooldown. And probably by the time that I kill them, they are gonna be back, so. I should have probably gone with Triple Nuker in this fight instead of Double Reviver, but it kind of depended on his builds as well. I think if he had um, a tanky, if he had fast Revivers instead of Ultra Tanky Revivers, then this would have been good, but the builds were a bad matchup for the solo helicat nook. I mean, my team is very tanky, but his team is very tanky as well. The only non-tanky champion in his team is the Garol, and everybody else is ultra tanky as well. Probably how to end this um, video on a loss, but. We did climb a decent amount, so I can't get too salty about that. Would be fun to run and Helicat together. I think that will be um, Ultra Cancer, and I think that will probably be my way of beating some of the top accounts running those George speed teams against me, but um, I need to pull the Harima first. Yeah, there, there's no way we can win this fight. The, our team is not good enough for this. If we had a chance, I would have prolonged it, but these revivers are too tanky for just a helicat nook. I think I feel like uh, our teams today were all over the place. Sometimes I used the same exact team a couple times, and I did other weird stuff. Like here, here we have. A, a triple nuker for instance. Also, I didn't really use Lady Mikage a lot today. Maybe if we had Lady Mikage in this fight instead of Arbiter, the buff strip and maybe even the Ala Evac would give us enough damage to actually finish him off. I'll have to look at the fights a bit later and digest and think about it but um i don't know what to think now i'm i'm too tired so my brain isn't functioning anymore it is what it is anyway that's it today i had super fun playing with the cancer helicat so have a nice day and see ya